What's up? So today I am going to do a video over my air ride that I've had for the last year and a half. I got it done August 2021, the early parts of August. The only reason I know that is because I had it done in time for Euro Ozark Euro Rally, which was at the end of August of 2021. My garage is kind of messy, I'm sorry. This is like the equivalent to having a chair in your room to where you just throw clothes on it. You're like, I'm gonna keep it clean, I'm gonna keep it clean. But it's out of the way um, and it's not having to actually put it up somewhere so a lot of stuff goes here. I just need to put this up. Anyways, so back to this. I'm gonna end up doing a video over kind of the good, the bad, the ugly, everything that I've experienced with it. Um, I'll tell you all the perks to it, all the bad stuff, and I see a freaking dent in my door. I think I've seen that before. God, it's right here. I don't know if you can see that. You probably can't. It's literally the size of like a pea. I don't know how that even would have happened. So again, I've had my air suspension for a year and a half now, and I have had to make, count them, two warranty claims on this suspension. Um, none of the parts that I got from, it was Tough Luck Industries, I think his name was, which he's no longer around or no longer operating. He's around, but he's just not operating. Um, none of the stuff which came from him was the warranty stuff, but it was all from Airlift Performance. Good thing about a bigger company having issues like that and a warranty is I got stuff replaced, pretty much no questions asked. Um, it was a little bit difficult getting a couple or the first thing replaced, but not awful. Um, I've definitely dealt with harder warranty processes, so um, kind of overall wasn't that bad of a deal, but um, I have, like I said, had to do a warranty claim twice uh, in a year and a half, which is not ideal um, with anything that you buy. Computers, lawnmowers, golf clubs, anything. You don't want to have to use your warranty, but that's what it's there for, so it's nice. We will get into my setup in the back real quick. I think I was telling my mom this the other day. This stuff's kind of disarray because whenever I drive, it moves around. Obviously, if I'm at a show, I will set it up. I wanted everything so perfect and neat for Ozark Euro Rally, which it was that a lot of these pieces right here I had to put in individually and they're gonna get ripped up whenever I open this back up. Um, I could even kind of do it right now but it would make me sick to my stomach because it took so long. But um, what I have to do in the, the winter is every two weeks or so I like to manually drain the tank even though I have an automatic uh, water trap which drains your stuff for you so you don't have to worry about it. But um, I have to put in air brake antifreeze in there about every two weeks as well. Two weeks is stretching it. Two weeks is pretty excessive. If you went three weeks or a month, you're going to be fine, especially in Oklahoma where it's not, you know, sub-zero temperatures all the time. I'm going to have to end up ripping that, just the edge up. Um, I may even redo my trunk setup for next year for Ozark Gear Rally. Didn't win anything, which I was pretty bummed about, um, but it's like, I, it's probably not going to win next year for the trunk setup. And there's so many cool cars there that um, I have to compete in a different kind of way, like a creative kind of way I have to stand out. That's the trunk set up right now. I have the tank. I have everything else underneath this board. And this board is actually the original wood that I had under here, if you guys remember the wood flooring that I had. And it's freaking heavy. And it almost, almost gives you no sound deadening from the outside road underneath. So I might end up doing that whole thing over again just to make the sound deadening there. The first warranty that I had to use, the first warranty claim that I had to utilize was for the manifold. That was the first thing that went wrong was the manifold. I had a major leak in it. Um, even the guy that installed this, we couldn't figure out where it was coming from. We thought it was maybe one of the um, airbags. No, that wasn't it. He looked everywhere, um, finally gave it back to me saying, listen, I tried my hardest. I couldn't find it. I looked for it for about a week and I found it. Had that installed, uh, or uninstalled, I guess. I took it off, sent it back to Airlift Performance, and got the new one, um, same day, so I didn't have to be without anything, but that was the first major thing that went wrong with this was the manifold. Second thing, which you would have seen, was my um, controller. And I had posted this on Instagram. If you've seen, uh, or if you follow me on Instagram, you would have seen that I was having major problems with this. The whole underside wasn't lighting up. And one day I got in my car, I thought, what is different? And so I pressed it, wasn't working. I thought, oh my gosh. The whole area right here was just fickle. It was intermittent when it was working. And you had to end up wiggling this little plug around um, to get it to work. Obviously not ideal and not the way that it's supposed to supposed to go. Again, I reach out to Airlift. I call them um, via Instagram. The guy who responded to my Instagram story because I tagged them. He was like, hey, you need to call, whatever. So I call and they're like, hey, you need to go online and fill out. So I go online and fill out. And then I get no response back. You're supposed to get a response in like 24 hours. So I call, I think again, I either call or I email. And I was like, hey, just checking on this. It had been like a week and a half. And they were like, oh yeah, it's good. 
So other than that little bump of, hey, you're gonna be contacted in 24 hours um, and not, and me having to reach out about a week later, that was about the only bump. That is the second time I've had to do a warranty claim in a year and a half. Again, I mean, everything that's made, the guy was even like, well, everything's made in the US here, this, that, and the other, and I thought, you know, it doesn't matter. Everything that's made has a chance of messing up, and I just so happen to always get the mess ups. It's completely fine, but don't base whether you're gonna do air ride or even whether you're gonna use airlift on the two warranty claims that I've had to do, because again, pretty seamless getting them fixed. This next part of the video, I think I'm just gonna do some photos and some voiceovers of how exactly um, air ride's been for me, how reliable it's been, and stuff like that, so stay tuned for that. What's up? So you've seen a couple of the uglies that I've had with this air suspension over the last year and a half, but I will give you some glamorous things about it. I love being able to go to a car show or car meet or a parking lot and being able to air out. I think it makes such a presence that static rides can't make or just even a stock bodied um, stance. I really, really like the way it looks. I like the way it looks a lot better whenever it's aired out. However, I do have the luxury of being able to air up and air down whenever I want to at my own convenience. One huge thing that Oklahoma has a problem with is awful roads. If you've ever been through Oklahoma, we have awful roads. We have steep driveways for no reason sometimes. So being able to air up at my own luxury without scraping or fear of scraping the underside of my car, that is a huge perk to air suspension. And really one of the things that pushed me over to getting it. Aside from the way it looks, but being functional in that way was a huge seller or a selling point whenever I purchased the air suspension. Now, with the problems that I've had, they haven't been the end of the world by any means, um, but kind of going along with the bad, the air ride or the, the ride quality in the air suspension is awful. It is horrible compared to stock, obviously, but it's even bad compared to when I was on H&R Sports Springs. Um, there were some of the components in the suspension when I was on springs that were failing because they were stock. Uh, so those were fixed when I went to air ride because I got the coilover bags or whatever they're called. So that fixed those. But the way that the car rides, it's just not anywhere as smooth as it I would have hoped it would have been or kind of airy as you like to assume that air ride is. You feel every bit of the road, you hear a lot of the road, and that's because I have the back portion of the trunk area out, which I'm gonna sound dead and fix soon. You hear it, you feel it, it's just not the best ride in the world. Um, if this was a daily driver, I would probably consider going back to springs or even coilovers because of how bad the ride is, but since it's not, it's not that big of a deal to me. Um, but it could be if you are considering purchasing air suspension for your daily your daily driver. I know a lot of the way that it rides has to do with how the coilovers are set up and stuff like that. So I may think about tinkering that later on down the road, but I really don't have the expertise to do that or even really the desire just because I drive this so infrequently. So again, I hope this video helped you guys. If you're kind of on the edge of things that could go bad with air suspension, this by no means is the worst that it could have been with things that went bad with my air suspension, but there are two things that have gone bad so far and just kind of my opinion overall over the last year and a half. I'm glad I did it. It was a neat thing that I wanted to do. I'll probably bag cars in the future. Um, I wanna keep this car for kind of forever. So I may end up bagging other cars that I have later on in the future that aren't my daily driver. But would I bag my daily driver? Probably not. Um, but other than that, I really, really enjoy it. I love the way it looks and the functionality of it being able to air up and air down, like I said, at my own convenience. So I hope this video kind of helped you a little bit if you're doing some research on deciding whether or not you should have air ride. Um, do not let this video make up your mind. Just let it kind of add to the research that you're gathering. So I appreciate you watching. If you don't follow me on Instagram, follow me on Instagram. My cars are my kids is my handle. You find out things a whole lot quicker than you do if you're just relying on YouTube. Other than that, I will catch you guys in the next video.